Hey guys, it's Banshus here, and this video is geared more towards people who haven't played BM Hunter before or haven't played it in a long time and want to understand the basic rotation. If you're already a decent hunter, feel free to watch the video and mention anything I forgot or should have mentioned in the comments below. I'll be posting more videos in the future geared towards more advanced players. First up, we have our rotation. You have five major damaging abilities in your kit. Cobra Shot, Kill Command, Barb Shot, Multi Shot, and Kill Shot. Some abilities cost focus, and some cost nothing. Kill Command is your single highest hitting ability that has a 7 second cooldown, and you typically want to press it off cooldown. Cobra Shot does decent single target damage, and reduces the cooldown of your Kill Command by 1 second each time you press it. Multi Shot hits multiple targets for a small amount, and activates Beast Cleave on your pet for 4 seconds. You should only really use Multi Shot on 3 plus targets. Beast Cleave means that your pet attacks will also AoE cleave around them as long as it's up. This scales with Mastery too, since it's pet damage. Your last ability is the most complicated, but also the most important ability in your kit. Barb Shot. Barb Shot has two charges at a 12 second recharge. It doesn't cost any focus. It puts a ticking bleed on your target for 8 seconds when you press it. It also gives you a buff that gives you 20 focus over the next 8 seconds. This is key for focus sustain. It also makes each of your pets stomp, dealing an AoE stomp on the ground, hitting all enemies near them. This scales with mastery since it's pet damage. Barb Shot also puts a stacking buff on your pet called Frenzy that can stack up to 3 times. Each application of Frenzy will increase your pet's attack speed by 30% up to 90% at max stack. It also refreshes the timer of the current Frenzy buff. Most of a hunter's damage ends up being their pet's damage. With good reason. If you press Barb Shot at least once every 8 seconds, you'll keep Frenzy up at 3 stacks and greatly increasing your pet damage. You'll also want to be pressing Multi Shot every 4 seconds on AoE targets because your Frenzy will be comboing with your Beast Cleave and you'll be hitting everything in the pack super super fast. If you look at my pets right now, you can see that the red circle coming out of them which is the Beast Cleave visual. Back to Kill Command and Cobra Shot. I often get asked when to press these buttons when in AoE situations, as opposed to just spamming multi-shot. For a quick TLDR, at 5 or more targets, you should just spam multi-shot and barb shot, and completely neglect kill command and cobra shot. At 3 to 4 targets, you should prioritize not letting beast cleave fall, meaning you're pressing it at least once every 4 seconds to keep up the buff, but still pressing kill command when it's available. You don't want to press cobra shot at all during this time, because multi shot will have more value in this situation. At 1 to 2 targets, you press kill command off cooldown and Cobra shot just to reset your kill command cooldown. And again, at all target counts, you're still trying to keep frenzy up. Super important. And the very last damaging ability, I say for last because you can only really press it when the enemy is below 20% health. It's called kill shot. It does a ton of damage and is commonly referred to as a hunter's execute. And in terms of all your passives, we already talked about Beast Cleave. Exotic Beast means that you can tame exotic pets. Kindred Spirits increases the maximum focus of you and your pet by 20. That's why you have 120 focus instead of 100. Your Mastery increases your pet damage. Pack Tactics increases your focus regeneration by 100%. And the most important passive is Wild Call, which means that your auto shot critical strikes have a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of Barb Shot. So if you ever see your barb shot randomly glow and come back with a charge, this is what it is. Now for your damaging cooldowns. You have two, Aspect of the Wild and Bestial Wrath. Basically, you just want to press these off cooldown. The reason for that is because Bestial Wrath increases your damage by 25% and your pet's damage by 25% for 15 seconds. It has a 1.5 minute cooldown. However, every single time you press barb shot, it reduces the cooldown of your Bestial Wrath by 12 seconds. This is super important because it makes Barb Shot even more powerful than it already was. Aspect of the Wild increases your critical strike by 10% and gives you 5 focus per second for 20 seconds. It has a 2 minute cooldown and while you're in this window your focus regen should be really strong. Alright, next up we'll talk about our escapes and gap closers. Your first one is Aspect of the Cheetah, which will increase your movement speed by 90% for 5 seconds and then it'll dwindle down to 30% increase for the next 9 seconds. Your other gap closer you have is Disengage, which is like a little 20 yard backflip. 
If you spin your camera around properly, you can use this backflip to propel you forward or whichever way you'd like. And now we have defensives. You have Exhilarate, which will heal you for 30% of your health and your pets to full health. You also have Aspect of the Turtle, which is an 8 second buff that reduces your damage taken by 30%, like any existing dots that you already have on you. And it makes you deflect all future attacks. Deflecting means you're immune to target acquisition spells, so a good way to explain this is in King's Rest. So let's say you're on the first boss, and you need to have Turtle active before the boss finishes his cast of Spit Gold, as opposed to when the projectile hits you. This way you're actually immuning the application completely. Another thing to note about Turtle is that you're kind of a sitting duck while it's active because you can't attack, but if you press it again, you can cancel it for whatever reason. And next up, we have Crowd Controls. First off, we have our interrupt, which is called Counter Shot. It has a 24 second cooldown. We also have Frost Trap, which is a 30 second cooldown, and it'll freeze a mob that walks over it for a minute. I often use it as a pseudo stop, meaning that someone is casting something, and I'll use it to stop the cast. If you walk near the mob, you will get in combat, so if you're using Frost Trap to skip a pack or something like that, make sure everyone's out of combat with it by feigning or melding, or the mob will chase you guys down. We also have Intimidate, which is a 5 second pet stun, so your pet will just run in and send the mob for 5 seconds. It's also mainly used for pseudo stops, similar to Trap. We have Binding Shot, which is probably the best CC in the game, or close to it. Anything that walks outside of the Binding Shot gets rooted for 7 seconds, and this root doesn't break on damage. It's super super powerful, tanks will love you if you take this talent, and just be careful not to root things in Sanguine. Tar Trap has a 30 second cooldown and drops a slow on the ground that is super useful for kiting mobs around. Another slow that you guys have is Concussive Shot. It's a single target slow, and overall it's not super powerful, but there is a really cool interaction with Cobra Shot, where every time you press Cobra Shot, you'll extend the slow by 3 seconds. If you play this properly, by consistently Cobra Shotting each mob in a pack that has Concussive Shot on it, you can keep like 3 mobs permanently slowed or slow a couple mobs pretty well. And now we have our utility spells. The first one is Misdirect, which is a trick where all of the hunter's threat will transfer to the target for 5 seconds, but it doesn't affect pet's threat. We also have Flare, which can be used to take invisible targets that walk into the flare out of stealth. It's mainly used in PvP to get rogues, druids, or maybe other hunters out of stealth, but also if you look at this clip of Atal Dazar, a lot of hunters like to flare out these stalkers on the stairs and misdirect them to the tank since these guys are in fish account. Tranquilizing Shot is both a Soothe, meaning it removes an Enrage, and it's also a Purge, meaning it removes magical effects from enemies. It's super useful in situations like Wicked Frenzy and Underrot, or Protectivara in Trine of the Storm. Camouflage is a utility talent that can give you stealth and sneak around mobs if you opt into it. It's very niche, and used often in PvP or for advanced dungeon skips. You can also cast Mend Pet to heal your pet if it's hurt, healing it for a decent amount on a short cooldown, and it's important to note that this doesn't cost any focus. I like to spam this ability when I'm out of combat or walking towards the next pack to make sure my pets are always at top health. And your most important utility spell is Feign Death and also by proxy Play Dead. They kinda go hand in hand. Play Dead is learned from a book you can buy at the True Shot Lodge to make your pets Feign Death as well. At face value, the spell lets you drop combat with any mobs you're in combat with. However, at a more advanced level, it also disjoints any spell casts on you since you're dropping combat and this leaves a ton of room for very high skill plays. For example, in Waycrest Manor, when fighting Rawl the Gluttonous, when he's using Rotten Expulsion on you, you can feign death it and he just won't cast the ability, meaning there's no spit on the ground for your group to take damage from, and the little blobs that come out won't spawn at all. Another good example is Akusir in Shrine of the Storm where you can feign death his undertow and stop a ton of damage intake. There are many many uses for feign death to stop boss casts, as well as mob casts or player casts and the skill cap is just super high. You can also use feign death to set up a camouflage, since you can only use camo when you're not in combat. So like, let's say you're in freehold and you're trying to solo the dog, you can usually your rogue does it, but let's say your group doesn't have a rogue, um, then your druid could do it, or you could do it if you take camo. And lastly, don't forget to use Play Dead on your pets if you want them to drop combat with you. Otherwise, 
you'll be finding another pack and then all of a sudden your pets will run through like six mobs and you'll pull like a bunch of stuff to you guys. And lastly, we have pets. I'll make a video in the future discussing pets in much greater detail because I think they're a very complicated topic, but I'll outline some basic stuff here. So each pet belongs to both a pet family and a pet specialization. Each pet family has a unique utility spell and each pet spec has a unique utility spell and a passive. So there's a ton of different combinations. The most important thing to note here though is that every pet in the game does the exact same damage. This means that you can choose your pet based off aesthetics or the utility that you want your pet to have. Maybe you just really like having a dragon pet or a wolf pet or you just really need bloodlust for your group. I'll just throw out my top three used pets for examples but any pet you want within reason should be fine. My main pet is a spirit beast porcupine from Mop that has a self dispel so that I can remove poison, diseases, and magic debuffs from my pet on a 10 second cooldown. So I can just constantly dispel it in packs that consistently debuff it. It also gives you 7.5% more total health, and it gives you Survival the Fittest, which is a 3 minute cooldown damage reduction, and it's super powerful. It also has Spirit Mend, which is an off heal, so you can use it to heal your group, your pet, or even yourself. My second main pet is a Netherray from Najatar that is 15% leech for you and your pet. A self dispel just like my Porcupine, and it has Bloodlust. Bloodlust is an extremely powerful cooldown that mages, shamans, and ferocity pets have access to, so I would highly recommend having at least one lust in your parties. My third main pet is a raptor from Zuldazar that gives you 10% movement speed and a freedom spell, which means it dispels all slows on you or a teammate for 30 seconds. This is a very useful spell in PvP or on particular boss fights, like dispelling the barrel on the second boss in Freehold or dispelling slows on the third boss in Shrine of the Storm. And that's about all I have for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. This was the first part of a series of videos I'll be posting to help teach newer players all about hunters and how to play them at a high level.